Hello YouTube, as you may have noticed I've had a channel name change and branding change from Wizards of 12 to Mirror Create. Also, if you notice, I have this PC running here. This keyboard and most of the components in this PC, guess what, we're all e-waste finds. It is a first gen i7 GTX 660 and uh, 18 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the only there's only a few components that weren't trash finds like the hard disk. I tend to avoid that. Now this thing's running a dish upgrade. I gotta be kind of a little bit careful. But so that motherboard right in there, the processor, the RAM, and the graphics cards were trash finds. I also scored two GTX four uh, sixties but I didn't bother with those. I went with the 660 that Ian gave me. Uh, on close inspection, you may notice the heat sink is held on with several cable ties. That is because the heat sink is from the original motherboard in this case, which had a Core 2 Duo. And the socket bracket doesn't really align well. Thermals seem to be doing okay. This keyboard is a Razer Black Widow Ultimate uh, 2012 edition, full mechanical, extended macros, still got to find out how to configure the macros. It's got a 10 key, and it has a really nice feel, but unfortunately it only has one color, and that is blue. These are the GTX 460s I was talking about, and it came with a little SLI bridge. Of course, I didn't bother with these as I had the 660. I also got this function generator, which I went through it and I've almost got it working. The main problem is it had a blown fuse on the 50 ohm output. Uh, this one has a range of up to 1 megahertz. It's from 1999. It is a Instech GFG 8020H. This is the original motherboard that was in the case that had the Core 2. Um, and of course, I swapped it out, but I kept the heatsink. Uh, it's also got this diagonal configuration. I don't know why they chose that. I'm also working on a Meerkat fursuit head, uh, semi tuny or tuny style. Uh, I still have to do a lot of foam forming and carving on this thing. I have a couple different colors, one for the main color, the eyes, dark areas, and one for the top hair floof. I have a lot of this stuff because it was really cheap. So I love this. I love this mink fabric, too. And that's just standard camel. As for the mink itself, there's several complications within the in, for the internal structure, but it does. I mean, I can put it on, it's just got a lot of pokey bits in there. That's the disadvantages of using mesh structure. That's why I'm going with foam structure on my next one. In addition, I've done some restoration on my precision base. Uh, well, it's kind of, it's a Memphis base. It's a P-Base clone. Uh, these saddles were missing when I got it. Uh, it had two outer ones and someone just put a piece of plastic they cut for the middle. And so I replaced them all with proper uh, P-Base bridges, put some new strings on. I redid the wiring inside. It was a mess and their, the grounding tag wasn't hooked up or anything like that. Uh, polished it up a bit, got a lot of the grime off. It's quite unique. It actually has a 50 cent piece as the high string tuner. I've already ordered a bunch of boards for the Fairy Fly because I have quite a couple people interested in kits. These two resistors are 0805 sizes, single SOIC, and on the back there, of course this is showing as reversed because I'm in the JLC PCB viewer. Uh, I've got to get KiCad installed on this new rig, but there's there are your splatter board footprints and I'm providing documentation on how to wire this thing up. Uh, so if you're interested, please let me know. Well guys, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and definitely don't forget to hit that bell. Stay tuned for updates. Until next time, thanks for watching.